season ends tonight. The Southern Illinois Saluki is going for a sweep of Loyola. The Dogs took care of business in Chicago behind a big game from Sean O'Brien. The Ramblers still have designs on a possible third place finish. It's the Salukis and Ramblers, and it's next on ESPN3. Greetings from Carbondale, Illinois, the SIU arena to be specific, as the Loyola Ramblers are paying a visit to the Southern Illinois Salukis. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Mike Trude, I'm Darren Kennard. And when you see these two teams, it's the final game of the Valley season, and they might get real familiar with each other the next week or so. Yeah, there's a great chance that these two teams are going to meet in the quarterfinals in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament next Friday. So it'll be the third time that they would have played each other. Wichita State and Illinois State than everybody else in the league. The Ramblers, one of the top offensive teams, and they are led by one of the fantastic talents in the league, Milton Doyle. Milton Doyle could be the player of the year. You never know how that's going to go out, but if you want to watch a guy who can score inside or outside, get a rebound, even get a steal, he's your player. He can do it all for Loyola. And for Southern, it is the final game of the season, the final home game. That means the final home game for the seniors, Sean O'Brien, Mike Rodriguez, and Leo Vincent. And it can be a very emotional emotional time for the three seniors. They don't want to let the emotions of the night get involved with the emotion of their play. We hope that all three of them will go out the way they want to as winners on their home floor. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups for Loyola. It'll be Dante Ingram along with Clayton Custer, Ben Richardson, Maurice Kirby, and the aforementioned Milton Doyle for Southern. One slight change to the lineup. Senior Leo Vincent getting the start in his final home game to go along with Mike Rodriguez, Sean O'Brien, Sean Lloyd, and Teague Bowl. Mike, you touched on it in the open about that emotion that goes into a senior night. It'll be interesting to see how Southern comes out. Yeah, you and I have seen a number of senior nights, and sometimes the senior ends up playing very, very well. Sometimes the emotion of the entire four-year career gets to them, and it takes them a while to maybe get adjusted and get into the flow of the game. Kirby tries to go underneath, knocked away by O'Brien, and Southern heads into the front court. Saluki's on the offensive attack for the first time. Saluki's may have played their best game offensively of the year at Loyola earlier this year when they won that tilt in Chicago. And they may be coming off arguably their best defensive performance, even though it came in a loss Wednesday night at Illinois State. Loyola starting in the zone defense, and Rodriguez able to get in there. Blocked away, and Teak cannot finish, and so Loyola heads into the front court. Custer goes baseline, shut off. Kirby to Milton Doyle inside for two, and so the Ramblers get on the board first here in Carbondale. Doyle averages just under 16 a game. He can literally get a shot anytime he wants to, but is very unselfish. O'Brien has nobody to pass it to, so back to Lloyd it goes. Vincent attacks over to Rodriguez. Shot clock down below 10. Rodriguez fires and hits along to Mike Rodriguez gets Southern's first bucket and we're knotted up here a minute and a half into the game. Custer and Ben Richardson, teammates in high school at Overland Park, Kansas, and that foul is gonna go on Richardson as trying to execute the dribble handoff. Porter Moser, not sure exactly what happened on that one. He is in his fifth season at Loyola. He's 89 and 103, 194 and 204 overall. Mosier was a head coach at Illinois State, at Arkansas Little Rock, and then a trusted assistant at St. Louis University for many years. Vincent for three. Leo knocks down his first shot on the assist from his backcourt running mate, Mike Rodriguez. Good look from Rodriguez to get it to Leo Vincent, who hits the corner three. Southern starting out well offensively. After an early season, shooting slump. Vincent has showed some real signs of breaking out of it. He's now 15 of 33 in his last attempts from three-point range. Shot clock down to three. Richardson gets into the lane and rejected by Bowl. Teak with two blocks in the same possession. 
Shot clock violation, it'll be Southern Illinois basketball. For Teak, those are blocks number 67 and 68 of the season, too, in that one sequence. He is so good to have to block up that middle. Looked like he wanted to do a finger wag there, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has had a great run here in the last week or so. That's 15 blocks in the last three plus games. Rodriguez a deep three and that's off the mark. O'Brien tracks down the rebound into the lane, finishes with the left hand. Southern off to a 7-2 start and the Saluki's doing it at both ends. Southern has a definite advantage underneath with Bowl and O'Brien. They have to take advantage of it. Doyle off the mark for three and it'll be Lloyd into the front court here for the Salukis who are up five here quickly. Custer having a hard time staying with O'Brien. Brian attacks Ingram off glass, won't go. Bowl had a tip but comes down to Kirby and so Loyola comes in to the front court looking to cut into this five point deficit. Underneath, Kirby swatted by Bowl. That's three into it, three and a half minutes. Rodriguez, one on three, attacks Doyle. Can't get it to go, but O'Brien is there for the rebound. And the Salukis are up 9-2 here early. Teak is doing it all on the defensive end, and nobody's getting close to getting a layup near the rim so far. Custer shut off. Finds his running mate Richardson, air ball, loose ball comes down to O'Brien. That may have grazed the rim, but not by much. O'Brien into the lane. Floater is way short. Doyle comes away with it. O'Brien thought he got some contact, at least tried to draw the contact, and there was no call at all. Doyle rejected by Bull. That's four blocks before the first media timeout, and Rodriguez finishes. Southern up 11-2, and Porter Moser can't wait for the media timeout. Huge start for the Salukis, as Teak Bowl has been the eraser at the other end. And Teak is playing with some energy tonight. Nothing is getting near that rim. Southern leads at 11-2. We're back after these messages. This is the Valley on ESPN3. Southern Illinois out to a quick start here on senior night, leading Loyola 11-2, but it's been the junior Teak Bowl who has been the difference so far. 66 blocks coming into tonight, and what we have loved all year long about Teak is that when he blocks the shot, he generally blocks it to one of his teammates and just doesn't swat it into the fourth row. His four blocks give him 70 on the season, which puts him into 12th place all time for a career with Tony Harvey. And as the season, he ties Tony Harvey for blocks in a season as well. Tony Harvey only played one year and blocked 70. And Teak is already tied for fifth for the season in blocks with 70 and tied for 12th in his career with 70. You see the 13 blocks in the three previous games, that includes uh, a couple of uh, six block performance and that equaled a career high. So he is well on his way to a new career high this evening. And the most blocks ever in a game is eight. So he's halfway there. We're four minutes into the game. And there's five <laughs> as Andre Jackson gets greeted <laughs> onto the floor. And the thing that Barry Hinson talked about, especially after the win at Indiana State, it's not always the shots that he blocks, it's the shots that he alters and it makes guys wonder where is number 40 in white. It's that intimidation factor, just knowing he's there alters your shot. Shot clock down to six, Rodriguez over to, it's Bowl and he traveled. Knocked down the <laughs> jumper but Teague traveled. Teague again. And this is a guy, Andre Jackson, who's instant offense for the Ramblers. He is one of the top field goal shooters in the country. He leads the Valley fourth in the nation, shooting at 68%. So this is a guy that knows how to score around the rim. Has a great chance to be the sixth man of the year. Satterwhite's pass tipped away out of bounds. It will remain Loyola basketball and the Ramblers who come in as one of the top two teams offensively in the Valley, a team that shoots 49% from the field for the season. 
They look completely disjointed at the offensive end. They really do. They've got one, two, three, four players shooting better than 40% from three-point range, and they're shooting at a 62% clip for the, for the season on two-point field goals. Excuse me, 49%. On the out-of-bounds, Jackson drew the foul on the lob attempt, so he'll go to the line to shoot a pair. He's a 67% free throw shooter for the season. He's their second leading scorer, and he doesn't start. He comes off the bench at 14-4 a game. And Teak will get a well-deserved rest here at the 14-35 mark. And Barry Henson has really shortened his bench the last week or so, and he has gone with the rotation of Jonathan Wiley, Sean O'Brien, and Teak Bull with one guy sitting out. So we have, did not see a lot of, didn't see Rudy Stratnix at all uh, against Illinois State and Austin Wire has been getting limited minutes. So those three bigs are who Henson appears to he's gonna ride with. And that's what coaches do as they get towards their tournament time is shorten that bench and go with the guys you truly trust. Wiley, tough shot, got his own rebound. Out to Lloyd, extra pass to Rodriguez for three, and it's good. Mike Rodriguez, a three. The lead is up to 10 at 14-4. Saluki is really sharing the basketball, getting assists on the basket. That is always a good sign for Southern. Doyle shut off, gives it up. This is Satterwhite, checked in, bad pass. Corral by Jackson, back to Satterwhite. Now baseline it goes to Ingram. Short, rebound to Fletcher. And Southern comes into the front court, already up double figures. Rodriguez shut off, still goes through, throws it up and a rebound and a foul. We're gonna call that on Ingram. It was after Michael released the basketball. Very but, late whistle. And they're gonna give Mike two shots. And the whistle here at the other end on the lob on the inbounds was late as well. Again, not, uh, not disagreeing with either call, just late whistles. And it ends with Rodriguez going to the line for two. Knocks down the first. Custer back into the game for Satterwhite. Teak Bowl back in, didn't sit out very long, did he? Not very long at all. Not when you've already got five blocks. All five starters played 35 minutes at Illinois State. Afterward, Barry Henson said that he was uh, a little upset that his guys had to play that many minutes, uh, but they did not get much off of the bench production-wise, offensively or defensively, so he rode with those five. Armand Fletcher into the game for Southern. Custer, an open three from the top, and it's good. First three of the night for the Ramblers, Clayton Custer, and it's 16 to seven. It's his 48th of the year. Aaron Cook into the game, running point for the Salukis. And a steal by Doyle as he read the pass. Doyle rushes into the front court, attacks Bowl, can't get it to go. Moser is upset, livid on the sidelines that there wasn't a foul on Teak Bowl. He is in the ear of the official over on that sideline. Fletcher, shut off, over to Bull, traveled. Second time Teak has traveled in the, pretty much the same spot. So the turnover gives Loyola the basketball as Richardson will check back in, as will Satterwhite. Doyle gets his first rest. Mosier trying to find somebody to give them an offensive boost. Bruno Skokna, who had been in the game, will check out. Richardson has it, shut off. Back to Ingram, gets into the lane and a reach in foul on Fletcher. Or, yep, that'll be on Fletcher. His first. So Loyola will inbounds as Leo Vincent pops up and back into the game. Sean Lloyd will get a rest here. Just ahead of immediate timeout. Southern up 16 to seven here. Yep, 
Ingram working on O'Brien. Floater off glass is good. Dante Ingram with his first bucket. He had a big day in Chicago against the Salukis with 22 and 10. Vincent drives, lefty floater as Bowl could not finish. And now it's Henson upset. Vincent with through the loose ball, comes away with a three. I don't think he's upset anymore. <laughs> Although he will get his uh, two cents worth on the way down. Leo's three pushes the lead back to double figures for Southern at 19-9. Richardson, corner three, open is Satterwhite, and it's good. It's only his 10th of the year, but every one of their guys will shoot it. Yeah, just nine of 36 from three coming in for Satterwhite. Double team quickly on, extra pass. Goes to Vincent in the corner for three. Leo Vincent is three for three from three. He has nine and Southern's up 10. I would say that all three seniors were cut in for this basketball game. Big contributions from all three to this point. Richardson shut off. Satterwhite back shut off. Fletcher nearly had a steal. Richardson from 15 off the mark. It's O'Brien with another rebound. O'Brien directs traffic, waits for the double team. Vincent thought about the three. Shot clock down to 13. Fletcher gives it up to Cook now. Down to eight, Cook. Nearly lost it. In trouble on the baseline. And he traveled and Mike Rodriguez quickly will come and check back in for Aaron Cook. But the Salukis lead it 22-12. 10-21 left in the first half. Leo Vincent enjoying his final home game so far. You're watching The Valley on ESPN3. Saluki's lead at 22 to 12 here, nearly halfway through the first half. Southern shooting it quite well, especially from three point range and especially from Leo Vincent. And we mentioned it coming into the game, he is, was 14 for 32 in his last seven games. He's three for three tonight. So Leo has regained that three point touch that they'd hoped he'd have all year long, but there's no better time to get hot than at the end of the season as you're leading into what would be a conference tournament situation. He is on fire tonight. Southern's three seniors, Sean O'Brien, Mike Rodriguez, and Leo Vincent have combined for all 22 of the points so far. Vincent and Rodriguez with nine each, O'Brien has four, and of course on the defensive end, Teak Bowl, <laughs> a non-senior, but he has been a big factor with five blocks already in the first half. And something we've yet to mention, senior nights are very important to Barry Henson. In his 15 seasons as a head coach, he has yet to lose a senior night home game. 15-0. Richardson bringing it into the front court. Doyle is back into the game. Custer shut off, tried to get it underneath. Jackson and a foul and a bucket for Andre Jackson. He'll have a chance to go to the line for an old school three point play. And that's gonna be on Sean O'Brien. Just didn't get over in time and got just enough of Jackson to cause the contact and Jackson finished the play nicely and has a chance now for that conventional three point play. And he knocks down the free throw. Cuts the lead back to seven. And the Ramblers showing a little token full court pressure here. Cross court it goes to Vincent. Rodriguez over to Lloyd, shot clock approaching 10. O'Brien has it now, double team from Doyle. Vincent a deep three, that one's off. Rebound underneath. And there were multiple maroon jerseys underneath, but somehow that ends up Loyola saying basketball. Saying it went off of Sean Lloyd, and he was in the mix, but he was in the back of the mix for sure. I thought they may have even called a foul for over the back, but. 
Back door to Doyle, and he gets in and scores. Loyola with five straight, and the lead is down to five. Great back door, caught Lloyd by surprise there, and Doyle finished the play nicely. Lloyd attack, shut off, floater, too strong, rebound to Ingram. In transition, it's Richardson, shut off on the baseline. Now down to Doyle. And he'll take it outside with Bowl on him. Doyle waves off any help, tries to go baseline, shut off. Jackson will shoot it from three, and that's good. Jackson with eight first half points, and the Ramblers have weathered the storm here. And Loyola is back within two. Nice 7-0 run by the Ramblers to get back in one and a nice backdoor play to Leo. Vincent into double figures. He has 11 and Southern leads at 24-20. A nice backdoor. Both teams are overplaying a lot on the wings and so right now back doors are open. Richardson kicks it over. Ingram will fire up a quick three and it's off the mark. Rebounded Jackson taken away by O'Brien. Lloyd attacks right down the lane and gets it to go. A lot of contact. No call either way as Southern takes the lead back to six. This resembles a football game in the lane area. Been a total of five fouls called only in the first 12 minutes and 20 seconds. Doyle shut off. Extra pass, Richardson thought about the three. Now the floater to Jackson, shot clock down to six. Working on O'Brien, into the lane, shut off. Now he fires it in. Jackson with the jumper. He's into double figures with 10, and it's 26-22. And Richardson drive the lane, saw Teak, and said, uh, there's no way I'm going to take it all the way. So he, he passed it off, and Jackson then made the conversion. O'Brien thought about the three, thought against it, now attacks. Bowl. Jumper on the way is good. Teak Bowl with confidence off the dribble, and it's 28-22. Doyle will set the offense for Loyola. Ramblers are 18 and 12 on the season. Doyle got stuck up in the air. Inside it goes to Jackson. Inside, fadeaway over, Bowl is off the mark. Rebound to O'Brien. Rodriguez attacks the lane, is tripped in a foul on probably Doyle. We'll see what the call is. And yeah, Doyle was the front man, so that had to be on Doyle on the drive, and we got a good one going now. Southern leads at 28-22. You're watching The Valley on ESPN3. When you think about college, it's easy to think of it like a building, long hallways, aisles of books, a place where you're going to carve out your future. 28-22, 6.33 left in the opening half, and one of those suits on the bench on the Loyola sideline is somebody that's very familiar to Saluki fans. Yeah, Brian Mullins played here from 2006 to 2009. He is the assist career leader for SIU with 509 in his career. He averaged 5.64 assists per game in 2008 and 2009. And just to show that he could play it on the other end too, he's also tops in steals with eight in a game that is number one. And he also is second overall in his career behind probably maybe the best defensive player ever in the Missouri Valley Conference, Darren Brooks. So good company to be in, and it's nice to have Brian back in Carbondale. And I remember when he was being recruited by Chris Lowry, and uh, Coach Lowry said, this is a guy that we have to have, and he was that kind of uh, a leader offensively, and, and he really set the tone defensively from the point guard position. And made himself into a competent shooter. Vincent steps in, can't get it to go. Rebound to Skokna, who's back into the game. Richardson thought about the three, tries to attack. Good work by Leo to shut him off. Ingram, pull-up jumper from the elbow is off the mark. And rebound comes down to O'Brien. Great position by Stradnick's allowing O'Brien to get there. Rudy using his hips to his full advantage. Good box out against Kirby. 
And Southern will reset. Saluki's up six. Down low it goes. Kirby with a quick double team. Now O'Brien attacks and tipped out of bounds by Loyola. It will remain Saluki basketball with five on the shot clock. Have to do a quick hitter here. They can, they can do a couple of passes. They're bringing in Fletcher for Leo Vincent. And inbound it comes. Somebody's got to get open. Fletcher attacks and a layup for Armand. And he's a guy that Southern has to get going to make a decent run in St. Louis. Without question, he has struggled since he's been injured and in scoring and, and shooting well. His percentages have dropped really, really incredibly low. They need him to get going. Skokna, and that is going to be whistled a foul on Rudy Stradnix. That was a bailout call there. Skokna just literally just lost his footing trying to turn the corner. He didn't hip him or anything. And in fact, he could have called Skokna for a hook. Yep. But instead, the foul goes against Stradnik. Custer's back into the game. As it'll be Skokna, Custer, and Richardson in the backcourt. Doyle and Jackson on the front court. Doyle shut off. Richardson now. Inger, or Jackson rather, an open look at a three and an air ball. Rodriguez directs traffic. Barry Henson stomps his feet with the offensive call. Back door, Rodriguez knocked away by Custer. Doyle quickly into the front court attacks. And that is going to be a foul on Sean O'Brien. That'll be his second. And Jonathan Wiley pops up quickly off the bench. Keith Bull also will check in for the Salukis with 4.34 left, just ahead of our final media time out of the half. So Sean's gonna have to sit with two and the bench now has to play. And that's Wiley. Doyle, over it goes, Richardson. Good recovery by Rodriguez. Custer into the lane, floater is good. So it's 30 to 24 here, 415 and counting. Rodriguez has been quiet after an early quick start. Lob the ball, that wasn't quiet. Mike Rodriguez with the alley and Tink Bowl with the oop. And that play was set up about five seconds earlier than the actual lob to Teak. You saw them kind of look at each other and that set it up. Jackson attacking into the lane. Skokna shut off on the baseline. Doyle. Good work by Lloyd to shut him off. Shot clock down to five. Doyle rises from three and it's good. Milton Doyle to beat the shot clock. A three and the lead is back to five. And that's why he's one of the best in the league. He backed all the way to the center circle with seven seconds on the shot clock and still got off a pretty good shot for a three. At 6'5", he is able to mm -hmm. elevate over most defenders. Not much movement on this offensive set for the Salukis. Shot clock down to nine. Rodriguez wants a screen, got a hurry. Shot clock down to four. Wiley attacks, draws contact and scores. They're gonna wave it off. But the foul is on Doyle. That is his second, and that's going to take us to our final media timeout. Southern leads at 32-27. Teak Bowl and the Salukis with the lead. You're watching the Valley on ESPN3. As we take a look at some of the top performers from around the league for the week, the newcomer of the week, Alizé Johnson from Missouri State, and the player of the week, Deontay Hawkins. Alizé Johnson has now won six newcomer of the week awards, which ties him with Dougie McDermott when he was with Creighton for the most in a season. And Deontay Hawkins has just had a phenomenal year as Illinois State has had a phenomenal year. He averaged better than 17 points, seven rebounds in their two wins over Loyola and Missouri State a week ago. So two very, very good players. One will be back and 
one is done with his career at Illinois State. So you're saying there's a chance he might win Newcomer of the, of the Year. I think there's a chance he could do it. All right, you're going out on a pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty thick limb, limb there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he is quite a talent uh, for his size, good rebounder, and uh, can play inside out for Paul Lusk at Missouri State. He can hit threes. He can go get his shot. He can make free throws. A lot like Milton Doyle, but he doesn't handle it as well right now as Milton does. Shot clock down to 14. Lob too high for Teak from Wiley. An unforced turnover for Southern. And so Loyola a chance to cut into this five-point deficit. Loyola trailed really early, 11-2, to two, and seemed to be all out of sorts. But they've righted the ship, and it's now a five-point game with, as you can see, a little under two and a half to go. Skopna shut off. Looking for Custer, who thought about the three. Now gets into the lane. Fade away over Rodriguez, rolls in. Custer with the bucket. He now has seven, and the lead is down to three. Cross-court pass. Fletcher inside. Lloyd draws the foul, loses the ball out of bounds. And... We'll see if they give him two shots. They do as Lloyd will go to the line with 155 left in the half. A nice move to the basket by Lloyd and a, a pass from Fletcher and Lloyd's gonna go to the free throw line and shoot two and it's the lack of confidence in Fletcher that led to that because normally Fletcher's gonna shoot that for a three. Free throw rims out for Lloyd. 70 percenter on the season. Been as high as 76. It's been dropping the last six, seven ball games. Well, the free throw line was the bugaboo Wednesday night in normal. Southern loses by four, and the Salukis were just eight of 19 from the free throw line. And so two misses for Lloyd. Southern two for four from the line so far tonight. And a bunch of those eight for 19 were front ends of one and ones. So it could have been even more. Jackson over to Satterwhite, who's back into the game. Underneath Jackson all by himself. And the Saluki bench getting after Wiley as it looked like it was his missed defensive assignment and Loyola back within one. And Jackson's got 12 now. Wiley gives it up to Fletcher. Fletcher long two on the way, way off the mark. And Loyola a chance to take the lead here as we approach one minute left in the half. Richardson stripped on the way up, but Jackson gets it back to Custer. Jackson underneath has it stripped by Rodriguez. Rodriguez attacks, lost control. Fletcher a rebound, goes up, and that's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow favors Southern. So SIU will keep the ball here with 48 seconds left and 23 on the shot clock. Gonna see it again, here's the drive in. Michael had nowhere to go and pretty good call there. Fletch was tied up definitely at the top of that thing by Jackson. Inbound it comes to Vincent. Vincent draws contact and we'll see if they give him the and they'll say out of bounds. That's just the sixth team foul on Loyola. Leo definitely initiating the contact there. Yeah, didn't get the shot off by the time the whistle blew. And Barry Henson will take his use it or lose it timeout here with 44.1 left and a fresh shot clock. So 14 seconds difference between the game and the shot clock as we are contractually obligated to tell you. First half, or halftime report coming up. We'll have our Saluki spotlight on one of the three seniors. You see him there, number 33, Sean O'Brien. And plus, we'll have your first half highlights and stats. And there's been plenty of them. This has been a pretty entertaining first half. It has. Southern came out like a house of fire, and you thought they were going to ring up the scoreboard. And they've cooled off the last seven minutes, and Loyola has kind of slowly gotten back into the ballgame to where they are now within one with 
The final 45 seconds left to play in the first half. Porter Mosier finally got a group of guys in there that were going to play <laughs> together offensively. They were doing a lot of just trying to get to the basket with Teak, and Teak Bowl has five blocks in the first half and really altered what Loyola was trying to do offensively. And Fletcher may have gotten away with a the travel there. Wondered if Southern would try a quick hitter off of the inbounds. It wasn't there, so the Salukis will pull it back out. Rodriguez working on Custer. Makes him fall down. Mike Rodriguez. Why you got to do that to a man on TV and stuff? Wow. Woo. He buckled his knees and... Custer went for a trip on his behind. Final shot for Loyola. Richardson down to three. Ingram into the lane, rejected by Bull. Number six ends the first half and the Salukis will take a lead of 34-31 into the locker room. And all three officials acted like had that shot gone down, it would have counted and Teak says, not in my house at the end of the half. Rodriguez with the jumper giving Southern a 34-31 lead at halftime. We'll be back with your intermission festivities after these messages. This is The Valley on ESPN3. The stats, pretty even as you might expect. Southern shooting it better, 54% to 44%. Rebounds fairly even, assists right there, three point shots. Both have made four points in the paint, 14. It's about as even as you can get it. The difference in the ball game, though, has been Teak Bowl on the defensive end as the Ramblers have only made 12 shots. He's blocked six, and all six were within four feet of the basket. Royal has missed 15 shots. Teak directly responsible for six of them, which equals his career high. He has had six in three different games so far this season against Mount St. Mary's, against Evansville, and then this past Sunday at Indiana State. So with his next block, he will set a career high. And you mentioned that the all-time record in a game for Southern is eight. Yeah, three or four different players hold that, Marcus Timmons being one of them, and he'll join a very elite group of some pretty doggone good Saluki defenders if he gets two more blocks here in this ball game. Porter Moser with some final words for his club. Again, as rough of a start as it was for his team, can't feel that it's that bad a shape to go in and come out the second half down just three. Rod Camp is the other person who has eight. Roland Roberts and Tony Harvey both have seven in a game. So he's up there. And it will be Loyola basketball here to start the second half. And nobody appears to want to take the ball out of bounds. <laughs> Finally, Ben Richardson comes over. And we are underway here in the second half. Loyola going with the same starting five, Southern the same. Doyle gets a screen. Now attack, shut off. Ingram for three, and that's off the mark. Sean Lloyd all by himself underneath the bucket for the rebound. Rodriguez will kick it back out, and he'll start the offense here. Lloyd pulls the trigger on a long two off the mark. Rebound comes away to Kirby. Ingram attacks. Floater in the lane is no good. Lloyd with his second rebound in as many possessions. And Loyola denying, but Rodriguez finally comes and gets the ball. Rodriguez attacks, gives it up to Bowl, who can't finish, but there's a foul. And Teak will go to the line to shoot two. That foul will be on Kirby. Great setup by Rodriguez again. And you know, if Teak can't slam it, something happened. He was hit hard on the play by Kirby. And so Bull will step to the free throw line. He was one of the few Salukis that had a decent night from the free throw line at Illinois State as he misses his first. He was four of six. 
and everyone else was four of 13. Southern now two out of five in the ball game tonight. Second one on the way is off the mark as well. So the Salukis have missed their last four from the free throw line and are just two of six for the evening. Down low it goes to Doyle. Double team comes from Bowl. Lob underneath. Kirby gets it to go over Bowl. And a little subtle adjustment from Loyola putting Doyle down in the post. Kirby's first two points of the ball game. Yeah, and Southern immediately double teamed when Doyle got it down low. And Sean O'Brien with a really nice take to the basket. O'Brien now has six and a chance for number seven. He sat the final 434 of the first half with two fouls. Does such a good job of backing, backing, backing down and then has angles to the basket and converts on that one. So Kirby goes to the bench. O'Brien just a 55% free throw shooter, but knocked that one down, giving Southern a four point lead. O'Brien has now passed Chris Lowry for 25th all time on the career scoring list. Sean sitting at 1,228 turnover. SIU Rodriguez into the court, attacks, swatted from behind by Richardson. Got just a little bit of it, but it was enough to take it off the mark. Doyle behind the back, attacks, and rejected by Bowl. Loose ball to Custer. Shot clock underneath, and Ingram attacks Bowl, gets it to go, and the foul for Dante Ingram. As Bowl did pick up his seventh block of the night, which is a career high, but on the second chance, Loyola made Southern pay. Watch Teak coming down on Doyle, right up and just swatted it away and just out of the outstretched arms, then back the other way, got too much of Ingram and he converts the three-point play. Satterwhite into the game. Richardson will go have a seat on the bench as Loyola extends the defense. And now we'll drop off into just some token pressure here. Vincent gets it over the timeline. And a steal by Custer. He has a run out. Bowl will not catch him. And Loyola has the lead at 38-37. And that is the Ramblers' first lead since it was 2-0 way back in the first minute of the game. O'Brien attacks Ingram and gets it to go. Sean O'Brien gives Southern the lead back with his ninth point. And the Salukis lead at 39-38. Sean is getting more touches already here in the second half than he did a lot in the first half. Unfortunate bounce for Southern. Rodriguez got a deflection, but it went right to Ingram for the easy two. And Loyola is back on top of this seesaw battle here just ahead of our first media timeout of the second half. The Ramblers have an outside shot at getting the third spot in the Valley Tournament if they win this game and they end up ahead of Northern Iowa in the RPI. It's a scant opportunity, but it is possible. Sean Lloyd with the three off the setup from O'Brien and Southern back on top, 42-40. The Valley will make its Seating official tomorrow morning based on the RPI as Wichita State and Illinois State finish tied for the top spot. Each team one head to head against the other as Ingram knocks down the baseline jumper. Dante Ingram has come out in the second half on fire for Loyola, but they will determine by the RPI to break the ties. And so that will determine one and two and that could also decide three and four. But as you mentioned, you and I is in a better spot than Loyola. Double team on. Shot clock down to 13. Vincent will pull the trigger for three. That one's off the mark. Rebound by Ingram who stepped out of bounds. So it will be SIU basketball when we come back. It's Loyola 42, Southern Illinois 42. It's the second half and you're watching the Valley on ESPN. And Loyola tied at 42, 15-44 remaining to play in this one. 
Alongside Mike Trude, I'm Darren Kennard, and we talked about these two might get real familiar with each other. They're playing tonight. They could play again Friday if things break out uh, the way it looks. Uh, what do you take away from that when you have to turn around and play a team like that back-to-back? -back? Especially when you've already beaten them once at their place. This is a big mental game. If Southern wins this game, then Loyola's got to have doubts in their mind that even on a neutral floor that they can beat this team. So this is a big one if the Salukis can get it for Loyola. If they get it, you went on each other's home court, and then the neutral floor is wide open. And you see their 3 through 10 is just an absolute <laughs> scrum. Wichita State and Illinois State dominant at 17 and one. They share the conference title. The first time in Missouri Valley Conference history, 110 years that there is a shared conference champion at 17 and one. Yeah, when you said that to me earlier, I just, that's hard to fathom. And I think it's the fact that it's co-champions with 17 and one marks right. that makes it uh, unique. Because obviously there have been ties before Southern and Creighton had quite the battles back in the early 2000s. Inside it goes, Jackson shut off, stolen by Lloyd. Vincent. Down low goes quick double team by Doyle. Lloyd will fire up a three. That one's off the mark. Rebound to Ingram. Five minutes into the second half and we're all tied at 42. Ingram shut off. Doyle will fire a three and it's good. Milton Doyle. He just does whatever is necessary. If you need a two, he'll go get it. You need a rebound, he'll get it. You need him to pop out a three, he'll get a three for you. He's just so versatile. Bowl with the baseline jumper is good. Teak Bowl with six. And Southern back within one at 45-44. Southern with a zone look. Doyle will fire again from the wing three. Off the mark and tipped out. And Ingram, second time in the second half. Right place, right time for Dante Ingram. He has 12, I'm sorry, he has nine rather, and it's Loyola back up 47-44. Nine here in the, in the second half, 11 overall. Vincent with a tough drive. Leo surpassed the 500 point total in his career in the first half. Working on the second five in this final few games. Inside it goes, Satter White. Lobs it for Jackson, tough pass, actually hit the rim. So turnover Loyola and Southern with a chance to regain the lead. Bowl, a quick fire on the baseline. Teak Bowl playing with all sorts of confidence. Porter Moser did not like that exchange and he will take a timeout here at the 13-28 mark and it will be a full timeout as the Salukis have regained the lead 48-47. We'll be back to Carbondale after these messages. This is The Valley on ESPN3. Southern Illinois 47, or 48 rather, Loyola 47 at the 13-28 mark of the second half as we take a look at what's coming up on Saluki home events. This brought to you by Carbondale Tourism. And the women's basketball team plays its final regular season home game tomorrow. It's their senior day. They'll take on Bradley, then the tennis team also in action tomorrow against Lindsey Wilson College. March 1st through the 4th is the Swimming and Diving Men's Mid-American Conference Championships. Softball has a tournament over the weekend, the Coach B Classic, March 3rd through the 5th, and baseball will take on Western Illinois in a three-game series next weekend as well. Now this past week, we've been blessed with some fantastic oh. weather for February, but I think it's it's a guarantee that it's gonna be cold and blustery for the Coach B Classic. <laughs> they, the, I've looked ahead and they're, they're looking like it's gonna be low 60s and sunny, but as we know, that can change in a hurry. I'll believe that when it happens. Yep. Loyola basketball, Ramblers down one here in the second half. Doyle curls into the lane, shut off, goes up and a foul, and that one's gonna be on Armand Fletcher. And they're gonna give Doyle two free throws here. Boy, Teak was right there looking for that 
block shot, but Fletch got him with the uh, with the body. Barry Henson knows that his club has an opportunity here to finish tied for third. They will be playing in the 4-5 game regardless. And it's a cosmetic thing to say you finished tied for third as opposed to you finished fourth or fifth. Doyle splits the pair. Southern with the basketball. Again, working against the token Loyola pressure. O'Brien gives it up. Open look for Fletcher, and it's good. Armand Fletcher is first three in the night. He has five. And Southern's back on top, 51-48. That could be a huge gift for the Salukis in the final 13 minutes here in this ball game. And if Armand can find his shooting touch, it could be huge for the Valley Tournament. Richardson shut off. This is Custer shut off. Down low it goes to Doyle. Gives it up. Jackson foul on Rodriguez. And so Andre Jackson will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair and we take another look at it as Bowl comes over to double team Doyle who gives it up and an easy call there for two free throws for Jackson. Yep, Doyle saw Teak coming over, knew Rodriguez had to guard Jackson and gave him a nice bounce pass. Jackson knocks down the first and Loyola with Milton Doyle at the four, very much the same thing that Southern likes to do with Sean O'Brien on the offensive end just because those guys just demand so much attention. And they can do so many things when they have the basketball, whether it's pass, shoot, draw, double team. They're both so versatile down there on the block. Doyle will get a rest here just ahead of the under 12 timeout. Ahead of the court to Vincent from the two and flush. Leo Vincent on the touchdown reception from Sean O'Brien. And that was a line drive pass for O'Brien. Normally he lobs it a little bit, but that was just a line drive shot right over the outstretched arms of Richardson. And Vincent finished with a magnificent flush. Skokna got away with a walk up top, gets it down low to Jackson, working on bowl. Throws up a wild shot, O'Brien the rebound. Southern up three, just ahead of immediate timeout. Cook. Gives it up to Vincent. Down low it goes, tapped away by Skokna, now kicked out of bounds by Cook. Turnover, SIU, and that takes us to the immediate timeout. Salukis lead it 53 to 50 as Leo Vincent throwing it down on senior night. You're watching The Valley on ESPN3. Little guys always wanting to be on camera and tonight they got their wish. Southern allowed Loyola to come back and take the lead here in the second half, but the Salukis have answered the bell. Yeah, this game has all the makings of getting up into the 70s. We thought first team to 55 maybe was gonna win this game. I don't think that's gonna be even close to being the case. Southern shooting in this half alone, 67%, 58% for the game. Loyola is at 49% for the game. They're at 58% this half. So both teams shooting the ball very, very well, but they're getting open looks. There's not a lot of contested jump shots going on. And if these two were to meet again next Friday afternoon, I don't suspect it will be as free-flowing no. as we've seen tonight. No, the Valley Tournament just always seems to be like a grinded out half-court game, possession by possession. Doyle down to the post. Immediate double from Bull. Ingram, extra pass. Custer, an open look at a three, and we're tied. Good ball movement by the Ramblers. Leads to a Custer three, and it's 53-53. I always marvel at plays from after timeouts, and that was drawn up perfectly by Porter Mosier, and they swung around to the corner, and Custer was wide open for the three. Fletcher to O'Brien. O'Brien keeps it, now working on Ingram. Double comes, Fletcher underneath. Contact, no call, rebound to Jackson. And Loyola, a chance to regain the lead. Doyle gives it up. Custer up top, 
Richardson shut off. Now it's Ingram over to Custer. Good ball movement, Jackson underneath. And Loyola doing an excellent job of sharing the basketball here. And the Ramblers have the lead back at 55-53. And they're making the extra pass on almost every possession. They're not taking that first good look. They're working the clock a little bit and getting Southern all out of position defensively. O'Brien out quickly. Fletcher a three, and it's good! Armand Fletcher with back-to-back -back threes, and Southern's back on top, 56-55. And I can't remember the last time that Armand hit back-to-back -back threes in a game. Custer will fire for three, and it's good. And back and forth we go. Ramblers on top, 58-56. Salukis are seven out of 11 from three. The Ramblers are six out of 12. Rodriguez baseline, kicks it out. Oh, Fletcher, I thought he was gonna pull the trigger again. Instead attacks, contact, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. And you sense a little bit of confidence out of Armand with the fact that he's taking the ball to the hoop and making some strong moves after knocking down those two threes. Here he is, just takes it right in, and Ingram commits the foul with the body. It's his third foul. And Armand has been in such a funk shooting. Six for his last 30 coming into this game. And that's over the last five games. And then also from three point range was just one of 15 in his last five. And if you go back even further, seven for his last 36. So as you mentioned, to see two straight go down, that's big for the sophomore from Edwardsville. And he knocks down the free throw. And we're all tied up at 58 as Lloyd comes in, as Vincent will get a breather here. His three-point percentage has dropped from 38% to 26 since he's been injured, and just field goal percentage, 46 to 37% since he was injured. So severe drops in his confidence and his shooting. Doyle waiting to see if the double team's coming. Stradnix comes behind the back to Custer. Won't go, rebound comes down to O'Brien who lost it out of bounds. And it will remain Loyola basketball with a fresh shot clock. What a pass by Doyle. Nobody saw that coming and little jumper from the baseline just happened to roll out. Doyle's got like, man, you gotta hit that. I need that assist. <laughs> yeah. Richardson inbounds underneath Custer, clobbered by Rodriguez, and Clayton Custer will go to the line to shoot a pair. It's the second foul on Rod Rodriguez, and just beat him to the spot. Did Custer coming off a roll, and Mike did everything he could to just make sure he didn't get the ball up to the basket. Custer's a 77% free throw shooter on the season. He had five points in the game in Chicago. He's got 16 tonight. Kirby checks in for Jackson. And Custer knocks both down, so Loyola up 60 to 58 here. 920 and counting. Custer with 17 to lead the Rambler attack. O'Brien. Shot clock down to 10, Fletcher shut off. Over to Lloyd, thought about the three, spins, attacks, and can't go, can get it to go. O'Brien with two cracks at it, but draws a foul on the second one. And so Sean will go to the line to shoot two and a chance to tie this one back up. Gonna see it from the shot. Tip number one, no. Second tip, no. But Richardson, who's complaining and complaining, got called for being over the back. And O'Brien gets the first one to go. Southern now six of 10 from the free throw line. And Sean gets them both to go, tying the game at 60 as Teak Bowl will check back in for Rudy Stradnix. And Milton Doyle will bring the ball into the front court as we are tied at 60. 
in the final game of the Missouri Valley Conference regular season. Doyle lobs it up. Looked like it was going to be a pass, and then he ended up as a missed shot. Odd-looking play there from Loyola. And a hold is going to be called on Satterwhite. So Southern will inbound. Neither team in the bonus yet. That's just the fifth team foul on Loyola. It's a mismatch if they can get it back to O'Brien. He's got Richardson guarding him. As Loyola doing a great job of denying. O'Brien shut off. Now gets into the lane. Over to Fletcher who's surrounded. Oh, Rodriguez an open look at a three and that's off the mark. Rebound to Custer. Just ahead of a media timeout. The right idea offensively, just didn't execute it. Satterwhite, Richardson thought about the three. Now shut off. Kirby has the mismatch against Fletcher. Can't control it. Back to Custer, who gets baseline. Out top, Doyle. Working. Fadeaway jumper off the mark. Rebound comes down to Lloyd. So both teams with good defensive efforts the last two possessions. So it's... Lloyd against Doyle, double team come, or excuse me, O'Brien and Doyle, double team. Now it's Fletcher. Attacks, draws contact, and Armand will go to the line to shoot two when we come back. As Porter Moser looks in disbelief at that call. Southern Illinois 60, Loyola 60. We'll be back after these messages. You're watching Valley Basketball on ESPN3. Salukis and Ramblers all tied up at 60 with 7.04 remaining. And Loyola is getting a huge contribution from the redshirt sophomore Clayton Custer. He transferred from Iowa State and he's making his presence known tonight here on a layup. He leads Loyola on the season with three pointers. He's got three tonight to give him 56 for the season. He's helping the Ramblers stay close in this one. I thought one of the interesting notes on Custer provided by the Loyola Sports Information Department is that he was 14 for 23 from three in his last five road games. Whew. That's impressive when you go into somebody else's house and knock down shots at yeah. that pace, and he's doing it again here tonight. Absolutely. A good, a good transfer for Porter Mosier. He's three of three from deep tonight, so you can update that stat total to 17 of 26. Of course, we mentioned earlier that Custer along with Ben Richardson were high school teammates in Overland Park, Kansas. Custer had to sit out last year due to the transfer rules. Fletcher missed the first free throw. And the second one on the way. And he got that one to go. So Southern has a one point lead here. This one's gonna go down as almost every Saluki game has this year to the wire. And Loyola has played like the last four games on the road, lost them by a combined eight points. Custer knocks down the jumper as Rodriguez fell down on the play. So Custer returning the favor from the first half. Ramblers with the lead. Six and a half to play, O'Brien. Dole, that's an off easy call. O'Brien shoved off as Ingram goes flying in his third. And that'll be the Saluki's fifth team foul. So again, neither team in the bonus quite yet. And that was just not a smart play, especially right in front of the referee. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get away with that. No, nope, there's always an official right there on the baseline watching the action, and that was a no doubter. So Loyola with a one point lead and the basketball here. 
Rambler's largest lead is three. Jackson, a free throw line jumper over. Bowl is good. Southern did not double team Doyle that time. But Jackson still with the jumper. And the Salukis down three with six minutes to play. Jackson with 18 now in the ball game. O'Brien attacks, up and gets it to go. Sean O'Brien, sneak, sneaky past Dante Ingram, and it's back to a one-point game. O'Brien with a double-double again tonight, has 13 points and 11 boards, excuse me, eight boards, still too shy of the double-double. And all three Southern seniors in double figures, and we've got a foul. That's gonna be on Teak Bowl, his second. And that'll mean free throws. Nope, that, that'll put Southern in the bonus from here out. So 16 fouls on both teams. Doyle gets it in to Jackson. And Custer will set the offense. Now Doyle comes out. He spent most of the second half down on the block. Attacks. Custer. Now it's Ingram. Ingram working on O'Brien. Lefty, whoop go, rebound to Fletcher, who corrals it, and so Southern, as the clock will drop below five minutes, has a chance to regain the lead here. Now the winner of this ball game is gonna be one who can make stops down the stretch, not necessarily the one who's gonna score the most points down the stretch. And Rodriguez with a forced jumper is bailed out by the fact that Jackson had fallen down and it goes out of bounds, remains SIU basketball with 13 on the shot clock. Yeah, ill-advised shot, fortunate that the Salukis get to keep possession. Pass comes in to Fletcher. Rodriguez splits the double team, throws it up off the glass and good. Mike Rodriguez with 13, his first two of the second half. And it's an important two as Southern has regained the lead. Back and forth they go this final four minutes as we get to the four and a half minute mark of the ball game. Doyle over to Richardson for three. That's short, rebound to O'Brien. As they head towards the under four timeout, the Saluki still lead by one. Rodriguez. Nearly falls down, keeps the dribble alive. O'Brien has it, wants to take Ingram. Does so, draws contact. They're gonna say it was on the floor, no basket, but Sean O'Brien will go to the line for the one and one when we come back. It's Southern Illinois 65, Loyola 64, 358 to play. You are watching Valley Basketball on ESPN3. They're dancing in the seats here in Carbondale. Southern Illinois leading Loyola 65-64. Sean O'Brien will be headed to the line for a one and one opportunity when play resumes. And this has been really an excellent basketball game, especially from an offensive standpoint. Both teams have executed pretty much what they've wanted to. Yeah. The the, the officials have let them play basketball pretty much tonight. It has not been in every trip up and down the floor. There's been a whistle to stop the action. So teams have been able to get into an offensive flow. When teams have had to make stops, Southern has had some good possessions. Loyola has had some very good defensive stops as well. It's going to be who can make the most stops down the stretch and make free throws now as both teams are in the bonus. Loyola on the night is nine out of 10 from the line. The Salukis are eight out of 13. Sean O'Brien at the line, shooting one plus the bonus. And O'Brien misses the free throw, rebound to Ingram. So Loyola down one with the basketball. Doyle has it, now good, to Ingram. Good hedge by O'Brien. Shot clock drops down below 10. Doyle will reset. Looking for a screen from Jackson. Will fire a quick three, and it's off the mark. Rebound 
tapped out to O'Brien as Southern gets a defensive stop. Southern will be in no hurry here. And ball taken away by Doyle and then thrown away and Richardson's ahead of the pack. Bowl is back and Richardson scores on Teak Bowl. What a tough take from the junior. He hung as long as he could, hoping Teak would commit himself, which he did, and then laid it up over the top. And the Ramblers regain the lead. An aggressive double team on Rodriguez led to the turnover and the go-ahead points. Fletcher nearly lost it, calls timeout. Armand able to come up with the basketball and Barry Henson is incensed at his club at those last two offensive possessions. Yeah, both times careless with the basketball, trying to do a little bit too much dribbling and you beat teams by passing the ball effectively and Southern just almost turned it over for the second straight time and Rodriguez did let it get away and here's that one. Great effort by Doyle to get down on the floor. Then Richardson able to hang and adjust and get it over Bowl, who has seven block shots on the night. Richardson's first basket of the ball game. He's a guy that came in averaging eight points a game. Porter Mosier was not happy with that allotted timeout either. He he wasn't so sure that Fletcher had possession of the ball. Both teams now with two timeouts for the final 245. And the shot clock is at seven. Rodriguez goes right down the lane, gives it up. O'Brien over Doyle is good. Sean O'Brien with a big bucket, putting Southern back on top. O'Brien now has 13. And he had to adjust with his left hand to get it over Doyle. Custer gives it up. Doyle an open look at a three, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes to O'Brien as he and Fletcher battled each other. And so Southern will bring it into the front court, up a point. That'll give O'Brien his double-double. That's his 10th rebound. If they give him that one, they should. Rodriguez Shot. directing traffic. Shot clock down to eight, Rodriguez shut off. O'Brien against Custer, attacks, running left-hander, won't go, rebound to Richardson. Just too far out to do that left-handed shot off the glass. 138 and counting, and Porter Moser wants a timeout with 137 remaining. This is where it gets good. This is the calling that offensive play out of the timeout is, is a is what Porter does very well. We've seen it three different times in this game. Out of the timeout, they've gotten a made basket, and Saluki's on the other hand, trying to come up with a defensive stop and then make an offensive call on the other end. There's about four possessions, maybe five left, depending on where they go with the shot clock. And Dante Ingram will check back in. Another reason for Porter Moser to take that timeout. Ingram has been a handful for Southern uh, to deal with. Uh, both in Chicago and here tonight. And you wonder, they haven't gone to Doyle down in the post lately. He was very effective early, and then they moved him back out on top. I would expect to probably see him back down on the block here in this possession. And I would, the same situation when Southern has it, you've got to get it back to O'Brien down on the block. O'Brien and Doyle are the guys who are gonna to have to handle the basketball for you in these closing few seconds. And it will be Doyle up top with the basketball. Spins into the lane, shut off and scores. Good work by Milton Doyle gives Loyola the lead back with 120 to play. Almost too easy, wasn't it, for Milton once he got into the lane? So smart not to get any deeper and he really took Teak Bowl out of the equation and knocked down the easy jumper. Doyle guarding O'Brien. Lloyd, shot clock down to five. Fletcher's got to go, fires a long contested three off the mark, O'Brien with the rebound! Quickly off a of glass and they're gonna count the bucket but they're gonna go take a look at it to make sure that it counted 
but I thought he clearly got that off in time. Yeah, there was no question. It was going through the net as the shot clock was going out, and if we've got it on replay, we'll be able to see it. Yeah, here it is. And you're gonna see Sean get it and easily get it back up off the glass for the bucket. 49.6 seconds left. Each team will get at least one possession. We'll see if, if Loyola might try a two for one here and try to get a shot off within maybe 10 or 12 seconds and uh, give them an extra possession. No question here that O'Brien got that off. And they also want to make sure the time on the clock is going to be what it is. And uh, definitely good. And Southern now leads it by one with just under 50 seconds to play. And the call confirmed. So it'll be Loyola basketball. Length of the floor. Southern leads it 69-68. Sean O'Brien 17-12. and 12, His ninth double-double of the season. The 18th of his career as he has led the way. Leo Vincent with 15. Mike Rodriguez 13. Armand Fletcher with 11. As Southern with the balanced attack that they've been looking for for a while. Doyle. Custer open, thought about it, draws the foul from Rodriguez with 36.7 seconds left. And so Custer will go to the line to shoot the one and one. Great head and shoulder fake by Custer. Got Mike right on top of him. And he's lucky Custer didn't pull up and shoot a, a three because he would have got three free throws instead of just the one and one he's going to get now. 77% free throw shooter on the season. First one is good. He now has 20 on the night. Vincent checks back in for the Salukis as Sean Lloyd will sit out. Custer a chance to give his club the lead with 36.7 left and the second one is good. So the Salukis with about six seconds difference between the game and the shot clock. Rodriguez gets it to O'Brien against Doyle. Quick double team, Vincent over to Fletcher, an open look at a three and it rattles home! Armand Fletcher gives Southern a two point lead with 14.5 seconds left. That was perfectly executed. O'Brien got the ball on the block. Double team came to him to Rodriguez, around the horn to Fletcher. You see it here, there's Armand wide open, and I won't say drilled it, it hit every part of that rim it was gonna go through, but it fell through and the Salukis have a two point lead. Well, you don't get an extra point for <laughs> pretty, but that is what we like to call rattled home the three, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is that Southern's up two with 14.5 seconds left. Loyola has taken the timeout. They are out of timeouts. So if you're Porter Moser, what are you drawing up over on the sidelines? You're, you're drawing up a play for Milton Doyle. It's gonna be Milton Doyle, and if he gets in trouble, if they double team him, he's gonna look for Custer because the last few minutes it's been those two, but in these times, they go right to Milton Doyle. Doyle is five of 13 on the day. He has 13 points and four assists. He's two of six from three point range. Custer meanwhile leading the way with 21. He's seven of nine and three of three from deep. Another guy who's been quiet here in the second half is Andre Jackson. He has 18 on six of 10 shooting. So this Loyola team has a lot of weapons you yeah. have to defend in this sort of Everybody situation. Everybody that they have on the floor can make a shot. Ingram has been a thorn in Southern side in the past. It's been 11 games since Fletcher had three three-pointers. Doyle attacks, shut off by O'Brien. Has to get some help, throws it. Custer, baseline jumper, no. Rebound O'Brien and he's fouled from behind. Southern with a great defensive effort and Barry Henson exhorts his team in the crowd and the Salukis are up two with 1.2 to play. And Doyle got in no man's land, didn't he, down on the baseline? 
and did all he could to get a kick to Custer, which is what we talked about. It was gonna be those two guys touching the ball. And Milton Doyle just went to a spot on the floor where he had no business going. And that was a great effort by O'Brien to Tremendous. shut that baseline off at that point. O'Brien misses, rebound to Doyle for the win! And they waved it off. They waved it off anyway. And so Southern Illinois escapes with a 72 to 70 win. Sean O'Brien coming up with a huge double-double and then the big stop at the end. What a finish by the Salukis. The great offensive set where they swung it around and got Armand Fletcher, who is your least likely hero of the ball game for sure. Hit his third three-pointer of the ball game. Ended up being the winning shot as Southern holds on for the two-point win and then a great defensive stop, pinning Doyle on the baseline and not letting him anywhere near where he could get a shot off. The only thing he could do was try to get it to somebody and Custer couldn't hit the shot. The Salukis put four in double figures led by O'Brien 17, Vincent 15, Fletcher 14, and Rodriguez 13. 21 for Custer to lead the Ramblers. Jackson had 18, Doyle 13, and Ingram 11. Well, that's gonna do it for us, for Mike Trude and Dennis Galloway running the ship in the truck for us. I'm Darren Kennard saying so long from Carbondale. And once again, our final, Southern Illinois 72. Loyola 70. The Salukis will be the fourth seed in St. Louis, and they'll do it again in St. <laughs> Louis Friday, these same two teams. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other productions on our ESPN family of networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the Valley on ESPN. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.